All right, Dennis, week 10. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun, Jim. I got to tell you, I just came back. Well, actually, I must still be in the Arctic. You know, I just wanted to share the Northern Lights because tonight's <laughs> presentation and this master class is just going to take it to a whole nother level so i thought i'd show up from another level well you are definitely from another level <laughs> <laughs> tell I us where it. you're from folks <laughs> i love it oh hey lois thanks guys tell us where you're from tonight or tomorrow or whatever day it is wherever you are <laughs> washington all right Elaine. <laughs> hey lane yeah. Roxanne, she's doing great, Dennis, in Illinois. I'll tell you, Roxanne Reed taking it. Yep. Great. The uh, great state of Maine to Denver, Canada. Woo. Malaysia. Taiwan. Wow, that's something. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. You know, Love. Dennis, we only have nine days left for the teams to hit Master UFO. Nine days for this quarter to hit Master UFO. And you also know today is the longest day of sunlight of the year. It's June 21st. Hey, That's Jim, cool. if That's I cool. could just interject, uh, wondering if you could turn on uh, closed captioning, please. I think Dennis has to do that. Ah, on, I can do it? that. I can Thank do you. that. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chi, Andrew Chi up in Toronto. The man is amazing. Great backup. Good he to have is. you. Mm hmm Always is. So we've got it going now. All right. Well, good. Well, why don't we, Dennis, we've got people jumping on. We've given them a little bit of time. Why don't we jump in to our week 10 topic? Sound good? Sounds good. I will share my screen and get us to our PowerPoint. All right. Week 10. Can you believe it? Do you believe in miracles? Here we go. Week 10 is going to be follow up and closing, guys. And this is an area I know a lot of us uh, really, really uh, can use the support. And, and, you know, I think it's going to be a fun topic for you. Dennis and I have some fun ideas and some, some things we've used over the years that have worked uh, really well. And I think you'll, you'll enjoy this. And this will be a good one to share with the teams uh, as well as we continue to go. Before we jump into week uh, 10, though, let's talk about week nine. And Dennis, you had a couple people who are, you had a, a, a person, I had a couple people that sent in their information yes. on doing their homework, which is identifying people, uh, Mark and America brand, providing a story. You had to contact three customers and ask if they'd be open to seeing the business and report on the outcome. You got a shout out there for somebody you read? Yes, I sure do. Maria Griggs, fabulous. Congratulations, great outcomes. I appreciate that very much. And I do wanna throw a, a big uh, shout out to our uh, new master UFO for this quarter, Kathy Bear, just sponsored her wow. personally, sponsored uh, coming in from product to uh, becoming now a partner, Jim. Oh, that's great. Love Kathy Bear. Congratulations, Kathy. And, you know, I'll give a shout out to Dawn Stubbs and Gwendolyn James as well. You know, Dennis and I go through and we look at the homework that, that's sent in and we really appreciate the people who take the time to do that. And uh, we know it's, it, it's great for you. These nine days left. So we're going to now move into how do, how do we take this follow up and close it down and hit master UFO uh, as we do that. Now, as Dennis and I talked earlier today, there's two kinds of, of follow-up and closing we really have to talk about. One is with customers or potential customers, uh, and one is follow-up and closing with prospects. And that, although similar, they're different, obviously, because one you're talking about a purchase and one you're talking about starting a, a business. So we're gonna approach these a little separately. And the first one we'll talk about will be customers. And, you know, Dennis, I just, recently started uh, two, two friends of mine on, on product, newer friends who have started on product. And uh, I, I had two interesting experiences. So after one got the product, I, I, I always call, I put call or text, but I always call and I called Andrea and I said, Andrea, how do you like the product? She's like, I love it. Uh, it first day, she's like, it tastes good. I was a little worried how it was gonna taste. My husband's taking the V6, great. Next person I called, name is Jen. 
Jen, how do you like the product? She said, you know, I took that daily essentials. I thought I was going to throw it in a smoothie. She goes, I didn't know that thing would expand. It went all over my car. <laughs> and a little bit different response, but still okay. She just knows not to mix it with anything but water, not to do it in a small container now. But that's one of the reasons, team, we have to make those phone calls. You want to show people that, hey, you didn't just sell it to them. Uh, you are following up. You're being a customer manager. You're being a coach and, and seeing how they're doing with it. And, you know, I'm a big one. Some people do a one, three, seven, Dennis, you've heard of that. Yes. You know, I, I, I and, and that's great if you're comfortable with it. For me, I've always liked to call them again about a week after using it. So I talked to her last, uh, she got it last Monday. I talked to her Tuesday. I left her a call shortly before this, this uh, meeting tonight. Uh, and I'm sure she'll she'll pop me back and let me know. I want to know how she's doing after being on the products for uh, a week. And by the way, when I talk to people on the first time, I don't know if you do this, Dennis. I actually tell them how to take, if they're getting a bottle, I tell them how to knock that cap on the side and knock the little granules out of there, blow into it so that it doesn't get gunky on the top. I, I think stuff like that, although it's little, is important because I, I almost stopped taking products when I first got them because I, I got gunky cap syndrome where <laughs> I could barely turn it. Yeah, those are real problems. And I will say this, your clients will thank you for giving them that insight. And another thing that's so important with the follow-up with the customers is, of course, building that lifetime value. Yes. And a lot of people just look at the customer as that original sale, but you got to think about lifetime value, all future sales, all the different referrals that they can provide to you. They can give you insight to new products that you can share with the company. Being a product broker, we can develop them. And also eventually going from retail to partner. And those are big things to remember. That's why you want to take each and every customer and treat them very well because People want to know how much you care about their success and getting the results they're looking for. So true. And, and, you know, between us, we have about 55 years of experience with the company. And, you know, I don't know about you. I've got during my time, I've got some customers who have been customers 20 plus years, yes. you know, and when you talk lifetime, that that's a, what, what started as a one OPC sale or a one thermochrome sale has led to multiple products being ordered over time, uh, month after month or every other month. That is a huge lifetime thing on there. Y yes, Dennis? Oh, you thought you were putting your question, but your hand up. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm just testing. You know me, I'm fidgety with the button, so it works. Everybody, the hand works. <laughs> That was great. You know, the other thing, um, Dennis, do you ever email out to any of your customers after they try products? Yes, absolutely. And I'd like to email out information, education. Uh, to me, an educated consumer is a long-term user. And, um, you know, throughout my career, even when there have been, you know, there has been uh, articles that have come back where multivitamins have not proven to be effective, but you know what the bottom line was, if you read into those articles, they basically aren't talking about general health. They're talking about specific uh, effects on certain diseases. And that's not why we take multivitamins, you know? So you have to really keep educating people on an ongoing basis. And I found that that really helps them do more referrals for me uh, just because they know more about the product that they're taking. Oh, I love that. I, I do the same. I'll pop an email out a, after a customer uh, has tried a product, but I also keep a customer list. I know we can, we have one in our back office. You can pull up to send things in terms of our um, being able to use our marketing efforts through there. But I've kept all these years that everybody's ordered a BV product. I keep a customer list. And you know, one of my favorite things is like if, if, if you and Dr. D do a video together, Mm -hmm. uh, it's on our YouTube station. I will send that out to that customer list, sort of like you're talking about. I'm trying to give them value add and not just always be selling. But I know if they watch Dr. D or if they watch you talk about products, what's going to happen? I'm going to end up getting a sale at the same time. So it's sort of a double double win. I'm, I'm educating them and they look at it as, wait, that's a nice guy. Send something out. 
But B, I'm thinking, okay, they or someone in their family may order a product from seeing this. So I, I think what we're saying, team, is, is, is be smart about it and take care of your customers. Absolutely. And I want to remind everybody, don't forget that new format for our unfranchised news magazine. That's a digital copy that you can send out those articles. And remember, when you send out an article and there is a link from your digital unfranchised magazine, it takes them right back to your website. A beautiful so way good. to go in education. So good. Yeah, and then I marked down the last part, just give them a call about a month after using the products. I want to see how they're doing. Uh, sometimes we're getting close to a point where they may need to think about reordering again. If it's a 90 serving supply and it's either 45 days because they're taking two a day or it's 90 days, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a call then as well. But the key is it's consistent follow up without bothering people. I think that's what we're really right. looking for. Yeah, one other thing that I want to say here, most important is that no matter whether you use the once a week then to the month or the first day third day seven day you know 14 and 21 for the reorder it's just what differentiates you it's showing how much you care about that client and once again you're trying to put yourself in a position that through your follow-up these people become impressed with your service in addition to a great product so, so true and, and, and so good. You know, and one of the things I think, Dennis, that's so impressive to people now is being able to use our trial-sized marketing. And, you know, since this has come out, and I know you and I were huge fans of this, one of the ways we use it is when we have a customer who orders online from us and we add this into the order to send to them, this or a catalog. Guys, don't... Um, save, save a couple bucks to lose hundreds or thousands of dollars. You know, um, I always look and say, okay, what was my retail profit? As I look at, it, I'm sending a sample of this, I'm sending a new catalog. I keep notes on my customers on that. So what I've sent, so I don't redo it. So I don't do it constantly, but I'm always trying to send things out when the company's put together a beautiful package with this, with all the information, with, uh, everything put together for you, you know, it even gives that letter that comes out when you send it, uh, professionally written and designed contact, and the automated follow-up, which I'll talk about a little bit on the next slide, but Dennis, how have you been doing with these? Are you sending them out like crazy? Oh, still? Fantastic. Sent two out today, sent out two different catalogs. I had a big day online, but, you know, again, you know, when I see somebody ordering some type of wellness product, and it doesn't include, you know, this combination. I'm going to put this one in specifically because it gives me that opportunity to not only help the client to become whole with this four-pronged attack to health, but also it's going to help build that share of customer. And I'm very proud of these, you know, this along with the sleep and along with the um, the Lumiere de V needle free. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yes. You know, I think it's more important than ever, D, for these for people to have these uh, to carry with them as well. You know, it's great that we can send them out from the company or, or send them out individually. But I know, you know, I'm starting to meet with more people in person. I met with the, uh, a wonderful lady who owns three gyms and uh, she's the one who exploded the, the, the daily essentials. Uh, luckily, she's also got a great sense of humor. But uh, I was able to hand this to her rather than mail it to her because I had it with me. And, and again, I think we should all start thinking about carrying these to, to start that follow-up uh, process. And here it's got an automatic drip system that it does. But again, I'm going to come back to what Dennis and I always talk about. Don't just let the system do it. Make sure you're communicating as well. It'll even notify you when to talk to them and when to do that, which is really good. Yeah, agreed. Dee, I'd like you to jump on this next section, if you will. Okay, let's talk about tying up, you know, and uh, no, we're not specifically talking about rodeo here. Uh, that is the T that finishes off impact selling. And uh, the reason that the tie up is so important is because it's a big part of the closing. And, you know, you, you follow up, you want to get that feedback and you want to immediately be Oops. able to understand more potential 
opportunities for you to provide more product. So the one thing that I want to start off with measuring up on how well you did based on the outcome. All right. So as Jim was talking about the follow up call, it's basically saying, hey, one of his clients was very impressed with the enjoyment of the taste of the product. The other one was willing to give it another shot after the a mild explosion in the shaking uh, in the car. But if you are able to book the next appointment to talk to them, uh, or if you made the sale, and when we talk about making the sale, folks, I'm talking about collecting the money. I don't say I, when a client says, I'll buy it next week, that's not, did you make the sale? You didn't make it yet. It's actually when you collect the money. And even if you can take a post-dated, uh, I know this is going to sound old school, a post-dated check, um, you know, or basically take a credit card, which what's, I think a, what's a check, Dennis? People don't <laughs> even know that anymore. <laughs> well, let's just say you can, you can you post it, you can <laughs> uh, Oh, wow. That's just showing I've been around a long time. But anyway, um, when we talk about making the sale, did you collect the money? That's the important part. You know, and that, and that is, is such a key. You hear so many people say, oh, yeah, I went out. I had a great appointment. You know, and, and then I'll just flat out ask him, how much did you sell? I do this with my son all the time who's in, in sales as well. And um, if they say it was a great appointment, you know, we're going to talk more about it, blah, blah, blah. I always go, yeah, I didn't sell anything either. Uh, I'm just getting the point across that there's nothing done until a transaction takes place, right? And that's really what we're going for. I Over the years, the, I've had some people I've, I've done product shows with or wellness events. I mean, they're so good on information, but they, they give all this information and nobody buys anything. And, and then someone like myself, who's not as great as they are, not even a one-tenth as good. But at the end, I'm saying, hey, my buddy Dennis really appreciates that you're here with him. Uh, and he, he's going to offer a 10% discount if you purchase tonight on the products. And we'd love you to try some things uh, to, to support his business and support your own general health. And boom, we move products, not because I know it, but because I asked for it. You know, that's really one of the things you, you've brought up over the years always. You can, it's not done till the transaction takes place. So when we ask about measuring up, measuring up how well you did, did they want more information? Were they interested in what you presented to them and how it might help them specifically? You know, and then you have to really go into measuring up and going back for the close that what will it take to get the win? And when we talk about the win, of course, it's making the sale and collecting the money. And then you also need to know what are you willing to give? Meaning, are you willing to, number one, provide a discount? Uh, you know, we can do that through coupon marketing. If you're selling online, you can put a 10% coupon marketing if they buy within 24 hours. And you can just place it on your site and then take it down in 24 hours. The other thing is, is if you buy two, you can basically get something back. That's a bigger, maybe a 15%. I often even talk to the point that, listen, do me a favor, buy that first bottle or that first tube or whatever that moisturizer and pay full price. And basically, if you like it, you can have the second one for free. If you don't like it, I'll take it back and give you your money back. It's no lose for you. It's a win-win. And so it's all how confident you are. And, and the one thing I've learned over the 30 years of being an unfranchised owner is that our products do exactly what they say they will do if taken as directed or used as directed. So, Mr. Winkler, that's why I'm a 137 guy versus a once a week. Okay, just throwing that out. But maybe if I had done the three, she wouldn't have put it in her shake. Because <laughs> I thought I told her not to, but you, you're, you, you're probably right. And again, <laughs> I might need a little more coaching on that. Not, that no great. problem. You're doing quite well. Hey, and listen, you also want to know the value to that individual or group. Are they well connected? Because in some cases, do, will they get you into an organization or a group of people? You know, I got to tell you straight up, 
uh, being a major in transitions lifestyle and working with weight loss and age management, if I can get somebody on a 12 week program with TLS and they happen to work in a building or a part of an organization where their success is going to attract more interest, man, I'm all about getting them on the program, whatever it takes, you know, oh, kind of thing. Yep, so good, so, right. And so position yourself to win. It's a little bit about what I was talking about earlier. A single bottle is just X and it's just so much each day. No matter what product you're selling, everybody needs to know this. This is really a big part of closing. Um, basically, or you could say 15% if you buy two today and that'll drop your daily cost too. Which do you prefer? This is that win-win scenario. You've set it up either to buy today and save, or if you buy two, that will get you a 15% discount or a cost of X per day. And then the other thing I like to do is you press on the pain, Jim. And this was how soon would you like to experience these benefits? You know, if people have shared their pain, a great way to close, okay? Based on our conversation, it seems you're ready to do something about your blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Look at us. Both of us are using that high-tech technology English, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Is it worth, you know, X per day to get the results that you want, okay? And I just want to throw this out to you, buddy. I mean, I have been in that situation where I got the dead eye uh, stare and they said, you know, Dennis, I really want this product but it's either buy this product or put food on the table. And that's when I come back. I'm so happy you told me, hey, why don't you do a party? We'll turn over the prof profits to you. And if we get three people that buy products, you can have this for free. And ladies and gentlemen, all day long for three new customers, I will help this person make sure that they can have that product in their uh, life. Oh, that's a, such a, a good win. When, when, again, someone shares with you that it's a tough time, maybe it, money's, money's tight to buy something like this. And if they'll do the work, right? You're basically saying, if you'll do the work, we'll get you the retail profit and that retail profit will pay for your product. So everybody wins on there. And you end up having the customers if they don't end up coming in the business later on. But it may become a win there too, where they say, if they've already got a customer base, why not look at this further? Absolutely. So again, the buyer will always have concern whether they've made a good decision. So anticipate that. So provide them that best case, worst case scenario. And this is where, well, Jim, congratulations on making that decision to try the product. Best case, you get the results you want in the first 30 to 60 days. Worst case, you can take it as directed, gain some benefits, and let me know if you're satisfied or not. I'm happy to refund the cost of the product. Making this decision is an excellent choice to help you find the solution you're looking for. Now, notice a couple things. I talk about 30 to 60 days. Yeah. Whenever you're using products and they're products that are very good that do not include certain pharmaceuticals, or, and that goes for whether it's on your skin or whether you're taking it as an ingested supplement, the bottom line is it takes longer. So don't be afraid to say 30 to 60 days or 60 to 90 days. Don't set yourself up for failure. You know, little tips you learn, uh, for example, you know, with different products, I'll, I'll just say this, for instance, prime joint formula isotonics really works well. However, it's gonna take more about 30 days, but our glucositrin, which is a joint product because of its herbals, that's in there, it'll actually re, uh, relieve some of that joint discover, uh, discomfort within the first week. You know, So there's a different approach to each of the things that you're taking. So that would help you when you're selling products and going for that close. So good. I, I had a, the, the gym owner I was talking about in the conversation as we talked about products and then talked about everything. She said, well, how fast would someone notice a difference? And, I said exactly what you just did. I said, you know, typically I'm trying to have people on the product 60 to 90 days. 
Will some people notice things quicker? Sure, but our bodies didn't get in the positions they're in in 30 days. So I'm not expecting them to get out of it in 30 days. If I can get 60 to 90, at the end of 90 days, I'll tell somebody, you know what, go off the products and see if you notice a difference for a couple of days. Um, the, it, it's funny how people will say things like, wow, my pain came back, or I can't believe what happened. But most people never go off. If you get them to 90 days, they don't want to go off because they're noticing that difference. So, so good. So good with that, Dennis. You know, um, someone asked Dennis a question on the 137. What do you say on 137? Is there anything special? <laughs> yeah, I sure do. On the first day, I'm just calling to make sure that they have taken their first dose of the product. I'm just reminding them, hey, this is Dennis Jim. I just wanted to make sure that, did you have any problems mixing in your first drink or taking your supplements as we discussed or putting on the lotion or whatever that we're talking about here. And so that's just making sure that they're taking it correctly and that they have no questions. The third day is usually coming back to say, hey, I was thinking about you today. I'm very excited about your decision to take this product and I share a testimonial, okay? So one of the best things you can do is identify testimonials of the products that you are selling because nothing better than a testimonial in the first couple, three days after somebody buys it. So it gives them the anticipation of good things ahead. The seventh day is usually an educational article or something that's going to, again, reassure them that now that you're taking it for a week, let me give you a little bit more information as to what's happening in your body and what's going on. And this is something that is just so, so very important. And that's even on day seven, you know, you're going there, then 14, you want to keep feeding that information and you're just checking in to see how they're doing. And that's basically it, Jim. So oh, that, that is so good. And have you found a lot of times, Dennis, um, when you call that person after they, they just got their products, if you had them shipped, because a lot of us nowadays, we drop ship everything, right? We don't carry as much inventory as we used to. But I, I found I'll call somebody and they haven't started taking it yet. And, and sometimes that call is what gets them taking the product. So that we, you know, Dennis said something earlier. He said the products work great if taken as instructed. He says it much nicer than I do. I always say they work great if, if you take them. They don't work as well if they're in the bottle. So <laughs> it, it, it's a great way to do that. But I love what you said on the testimonial on the third day and on the seventh day education. Uh, so you're not just calling and bugging them or, or just sending okay. something. You, you're, you're giving while you're doing it. So very very good. Thanks, Amy, for asking that question. Um, so make sure we create a, a preferred customer profile with your new customers. Again, uh, I did that with both of the people I just had in the last week in terms of setting it up before they'd ever ordered. Here's how we do it. With the one lady who owns the gym, I was showing her how to do it because she was wondering how easy it would be for gym members to be able to do that or one of her managers to help with that. And then get that order placed. As we mentioned before, nothing happens unless we get that transaction actually happening. From there, what we're trying to do is build, share a customer. And this is so important. You don't want to be somebody who provides one customer or one product. If you do that, you are not really important yet. You become important when you have add-on products. When they're buying three things from you, four things from you, five things from you. Now you're an important person and you can use things like the home shopping list. You can use things like trial size marketing. Um, you can set them up on auto shipper products. One of my personal favorites, because th then you know, they're getting it on a regular basis. Uh, and by the way, with your auto ship, you do have the ability to offer them a 5% or a 10% discount. If you choose to do that, and a lot of times if you can get that auto ship over a hundred dollars, they're getting free shipping on it as well. Do not forget that. Um, installing shop buddy is something I think a lot of us uh, miss, unfortunately, and that, that cash back they earn because they have auto ship can go towards buying our exclusive products. You can do a shop.com tour with them. You can do coupon marketing, which Dennis and I mentioned earlier. That's right in your, uh, under your customer section of unfranchised.com. Physical delivery of product, I know that's not done as much as it used to be, 
but a great way to develop that, that relationship. So these are all great ways to build share a customer. Dennis, that was some great, um, great information you shared for people on, on customers. And now we're going to move into talking about follow-up and closing with prospects as well, just as important. And again, an area we're all looking to improve on, right? Amen. And you know what? So many unfranchised owners today are having a tough time going not only from the evaluation uh, part of this, but carrying it on and then ultimately getting them to the close. And I'm excited for them to hear what we put together. And uh, I just think this is going to be so important for those of you on tonight and those of you sharing this. You know, one of the things we've been working on a lot as a company is really a, a no decision close, isn't it? It's not about, we've never been a company. It's one of the things I've loved about my experience the, these couple of decades with Market America was we're not a hard closing company. We're not a company that try, tries to close somebody down because we're building with a business partner and we want to make sure that partner wants uh, what they want and that we're helping them get that. So the no decision close, don't worry about understanding everything. Uh, all you have to really decide is if you choose the two to three year plan, you're not making the decision to spend that $20,000 to $2,000 or even $200. So again, at the end of a presentation, if you don't do anything, everything's going to remain the same. What are our next steps? This is where we're following up. We finish the presentation, get more information. Let's test market some products and let's do a trial run. Identify people to evaluate it and see if they know the right people. Now, you know what I love about the no decision close, Dennis, is it allows you to talk to anyone. Because you're basically saying, hey, even if it's not for you, or if you're not sure if it's for you, let's get people in front of it and see where we go with it. And that can be, I know JR always tells a story about getting to you. And I think he said he had to go through seven different people to get the name Dennis Franks. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> well, I'll tell correct. you what, that was a pretty good, uh, I, I'd say he, he's pretty happy he did that. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord so, uh, so after that evaluation a trial run have prospects lead to other people and you know we've talked a lot with our zoom trial runs of that that step one step two step three and how to do that i'm a big believer in getting people on products i am not a fan of bringing people in the business who haven't tried products i'm just going to be straight up on that um, i saw it happen way too much where people were coming in initially just you know, thinking they can make a living on chop.com with our partner stores. And you really need to be moving our exclusive products. And I like, I guess, because I came as a customer that made it, made it something I was very um, interested in my, my prospects being customers, then starting the business. I'm also a big believer in tickets. You know, our international convention is less than 10 weeks away team. Uh, what does that mean? That means we got to get moving. We got to get this thing ready to, to, to rock and roll and get people there. So if you're bringing in new people, they should be buying tickets. If you're talking to prospects who are on the fence, they should be buying uh, tickets for that. Get a senior partner on. You know, what a great way to get somebody on to talk to somebody uh, as part of the follow-up. Someone besides you, it, it adds credibility. It validates what you're talking about. I always try to match and mirror. If I was talking to a, a professional football player uh, who is looking at, at, after their career, Dennis would be a great person to talk to or someone who's had great success in networking. He'd be a great person to talk to because he's, he's done both of those things in a big way in his career. Uh, if I was talking to a teacher, a lot of times I'll put Fred and Barb Bolt on from my local area two teachers who have gone on to become members of our million dollar club, but I'm always trying to match and mirror because people want to know, can someone like me do that? Can someone like me do it? Of course, referrals are important to see if they can send people your way and then keep booking appointments. Uh, anything you'd like to add on this, Steve? Uh, yeah, real quick. I would like uh, to just take a moment. Maria has asked, in a simple way, can you explain a little bit more about the trial run, what, what that means? Um, you know, and that's Take great. Think of a trial run, Maria, as seeing if somebody not 
starting the business, but they're basically going to start doing the things a business owner would do. So let's say Dennis is doing a trial run and Dennis and I talk about what, uh, what one great way of actually closing we'll talk about is by telling someone we got to see if they qualify, right, Dennis? Absolutely. And part of, part of qualifying is can you get customers in front of the uh, people in front of our products to become customers? So a trial run might be having them get people in front of the products and people in front of the plan to see how they like the business. Now, if I if Dennis is my prospect and he gets three people in front of me who like the business and want to get started or they want to learn more, he's proving to me he can get people in front of me. That's what the biggest thing I'm looking for. From there, my job is to either turn them into a customer for him or turn them into a potential business partner. But if I'm doing a trial run with somebody and they're battling me, they're not doing the things we're asking them to do and they're getting nobody in front of us, then they've sort of proven in the trial run they may not be the right person right now for that. Um, I hope that that explains it, Maria. It's really just seeing if they're going to do the next steps of what we should do. Right. And, you know, there was another follow-up question to that that I think is very much worth addressing. Uh, Lynn, I, I'm saying this because there is no set step-by-step -step, what's right, what's wrong. All of the things should be accomplished. It's almost like a checklist that you're going down. Yeah. Some people, you know, after they see the plan for the first time, really should be encouraged as part of the qualifying process to go on a product as Jim was pushing. Uh, another time would be, hey, I can't make the decision right now. That's when you want to sell a ticket. You need more information. Don't listen to me. You're probably thinking I'm trying to sell you. So why don't you come and observe? Um, you know, when my wife and I bought uh, several franchises, what they made us do is buy plane tickets to California, go through a two week school, pay for the school, pay for the flights, pay for the food, pay for the hotel, which was several thousand dollars before we were able to sign the franchise papers. No difference. We're asking you, it's a lot less expensive to buy the tickets and travel to learn more to make that decision. So it might be before, but you know, that's going to follow there. Also, again, getting a, a partner in, you might need that partner to come in on a Zoom call to get them to the next level of the evaluation or get the first evaluation and to put two or three people in front of the two of you. So I, I think that's a great question. Uh, Jim, any other comments on that? I, I would just agree with you that, you know, while we've got a way we try to do it, there's nothing that's absolutely 100% set because everybody's at a different area of their life, area of what they're evaluating. Uh, so, so it can move in a different way as you do it. I love the story you compared about your franchising experience, Dennis, because you know why they did that? They did it to make sure Dennis and Nancy were gonna be the right kind of people to own that franchise. And if they weren't gonna spend the money to do it, they probably weren't gonna give them the opportunity to own it. And it's a lot like us. While we're not requiring large amounts of money, we're requiring time because if the people won't give the time, we're going to end up wasting our time. And, and time is our most valuable asset when we work part time. So, you know, uh, yeah, I, that's that is such a great comment there. I do want to say one more thing. Uh, and this, again, is to another Marie that has just booked a health professional discovery meeting. Uh, and I'm just going to say very quickly, you have to be confident going into this meeting. Do not be nervous. You can have some butterflies, but going confident because what's going to happen, you're just there seeing how you can help the health professional. The health professional is measuring you up if you can be confident enough to implement within their practice. So you cannot be tentative in this. So go confident and dress as a professional. Uh, I, I would agree. And someone asked about the recording. That's always out a couple days uh, it's usually out by Thursday at the latest. Uh, and thank you for the kind comments that you're loving this. And we will get it out as soon as possible, but usually out by uh, about Thursday. Uh, and you can always go to Market America YouTube. And there's an entire playlist of our one through 10 that'll be there now uh, as we finish this up. You know, this this slide right here, Dennis and I have talked a lot. And, you know, we live in a, in a Google society of people looking up everything, doing everything. 
And I think this is so important that you send this digital education and credibility uh, video. This is the actual presentation, which you can have to show people. But I think the video, which you can get on Market America YouTube, is so important to send to people because it not only, and by the way, uh, Dennis, this was updated in October again of last year. Sure. So we had it yeah. updated from the original and we'll be looking to update again in the next couple months because we continue to win so many awards as a company. But it shows all the great things the company's doing and it shows what's going on online where people are putting false things out there or why they're doing things. So they'll, you'll click on something and go buy a, a book from them or whatever. Great thing to send out to you. I send this to every prospect after I talk to them, Dennis, because I want to. I don't want them all of a sudden going into the prospect protection plan where I never hear from them again because they took a look at something online that was not true or was used as a marketing ploy for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And again, from this comment here, time is money. Don't forget, this is on your unfranchised marketing app. So move this video that is part of the business building up to your favorites. So it's very quick. So when you want to send it out, you can do it very easily. Yeah. And someone asked when the best time is. For me, it's, it's, it's after the introduction. I don't wait because once they, they know your Market America or shop.com, that is when they're going to start looking. So if I've met with them and talked at all about moving to another step, that is when I'm sending it. Um, let's talk about, you know, Dennis, when Dennis and I review this, we have a lot of fun because we, we, we sort of highlight what we think is really important. And we think one of the areas that some people are missing on right now is urgency. You know, we grew up, I grew up with Dennis Franks and J.R. Reidinger and Kevin Buckman in my ears. And they kept saying, you know, 24 to 48 hours. There's no 72. It was get it done right away. And somewhere along there, people have gotten like, oh, you know, I, I, I'll get to them next week. People are busy. Well, if it were a thermometer, every day that goes by, you're, 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 the degree of interest they have goes down 10%. So we have to move quick without being desperate, quick without being desperate to get them to move. So schedule the meetings ahead of time. When I sit down with Dennis, I might say, Dennis, I know you're gonna have a lot of questions even after you see everything. I would love to get back together with you again on Wednesday night if that'll work. Uh, and it's Monday now. So I'm setting the parameter of that. And a lot of times I'll do that beforehand because uh, I'm sure and I'm also confident they're gonna like what they see. So Dennis, you wanted to add something on that? No, no, I'm just loving this because creating urgency is such a big part of closing. It, it is, and we've got a couple of things we're gonna talk about with that because you know, while we're doing this evaluation and we're seeing if they're right, we also have to see if they, we have to show them urgency is important because remember, whatever we do is gonna get duplicated. And that may be a challenge for you right now. Maybe it wasn't done with some urgency. You want to have that because whatever you do is what they will expect to do. And you can create urgency without being that pushy person or someone who's trying to, to, to make something uh, uncomfortable. You do it by being professional and setting it up right away. That's really the way to be able to do that. And you do the follow-up. People ask me, how long do you follow up? And I always say, I follow up until they get started or they tell me they're not interested. I, I had a, a guy, in fact, it's funny, he sent me a, a Father's Day, Happy Father's Day text, very sweet. Uh, but out in San Diego, I followed up for 10 years um, and, and it was always the wrong time. He was a great business professional. I like it. And when I say 10 years, it's not, I didn't call him every other day for 10 years. Don't get freaky, people. What I did is I would follow up with him every couple months. Hey, Dean, how have you been? How's your business going? And we would talk, and when he finally joined with our business, you know why? I asked, I said, what made you decide to do it? And he said, because uh, you made me feel like our friendship never depended on whether I joined the business or not. And you kept following up. And I thought, if you'll do that for me, you'll do that for my people. So that's what you want to think about, team. Wow, that's so big. And you know what I love about that, Jim? I think... I just want everybody to understand this. He was not your only person you were recruiting at the time. Well, I don't think I ever told him, but I probably sponsored 100 people during the time he was waiting. 
I mean, if, if he had gotten involved, in, and you know, this is a mindset, if he had gotten involved and just had a good retail base and been moving product, but he was in the line, he probably would have had Dennis 25 or 30 people below him because he got in the way of someone who's serious about the business. And that's what happens when people are serious. And I know if you're with us tonight, we know you're serious. You're spending the time. You're going to keep growing. Absolutely. So true. So, yeah. And, and with the follow-up appointment, there's two ways we're doing it. One is to answer questions. Uh, and we, you know, a lot of times someone sees a presentation, even if they go through a step two, there's still questions. And a lot of times they're more comfortable with you and maybe a business part. I always like to have more than me involved, but they're more comfortable in a small setting asking them. I'm going to get them to lead to their people, as we've talked about. I'm going to move product and move tickets. Now, if it's getting them started, and Dennis and I'll talk about this some in the next, the next session, we're excited about how to get somebody started the first 90 days. But, you know, I, I like to review the getting started guide before we get them involved in terms of the actual uh, registration. I don't know about you, Dennis, the number one, my, probably my biggest pet peeve in the company is somebody saying, yeah, I registered someone yesterday. It took me about 20 minutes. I just, I just, I get so upset because that means you did it completely wrong. It yeah. means you got somebody in, but they don't know what they're doing. And they're like, oh, I'm going to meet with them next week. And next week doesn't happen. And, and at the end of 90 days, they purge because they've had no guidance because you both got busy. And that's just not fair. It sets a bad precedent for the name of our company. You know, franchises are so tough on their, their, their people like Dennis and and Nancy making sure they do it because they don't want a bad name. We have to be the same way. We want people to do it right. We want Market America, people to be proud of the way we do business. And when they hear the name say, hey, that's a company that's different, that separates itself. And we, we do do that. So as you can see, these are all the things I would, I would do going through that. But um, both of them are, are, are so important, you know, selling tickets. I'm selling tickets wherever I'm at booking registration date uh, and help qualify their top 10 possibilities. Hey, Jim, hey, real hey. quick on this. I, I just want everybody to understand that the two major reasons that people have resigned from being an unfranchised owner that when they have called in is the first number one reason I didn't know what I was getting into. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's number one. It right. takes too much time. And number two, I just don't have the time, you know? And so they, they stem from not knowing what they came in. So they, they were basically brought into the business on an emotional uh, approval versus knowing they were coming in to build a business that was going to take two, three years to lay a foundation, five years to get to their financial uh, position that they want. Right. They, they weren't... Uh... They weren't coached up properly from the beginning. And, and, and that's right. That's what it, what it tends to be. Um, I did see, go ahead. I hear something. Is that it? Mr. Andrew Chi asking a question? Yes, sir. Uh, we have a question from Donna Mitchell. Um, a, before we move, we move on uh, to the next section, uh, the question is, if a prospect does not want to meet with you without seeing some information first, and they just want the name of the company, uh, would you recommend sending them the digital education uh, video then? Well, that's a, that's a tough one, Donna, because if I haven't met with them yet, um, I don't have that, that relationship probably I would normally have with them. I guess you could send it then, but I mean, I don't know about you, Dennis. I don't run into a whole lot where I'm, I don't send a lot of stuff out to people who don't meet with me. Um, I, I'm really, you, we need to meet, and it can be meet by Zoom. But I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to convince. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I've got someone who's open enough to at least meet. If they don't meet, they probably have no interest. Well, the one thing that I might recommend, Donna, would be off of your unfranchised marketing app, the six-minute overview, the part one. Uh, it's six and a half minutes. It just doesn't talk about the business itself, but it does talk about what we feature and offer through shop.com and a little bit about the success. And then I would couple that with the digital education and credibility right. video right behind it. And I'd say, I want you to start off with this six and a half minute video, and then I'm going to help you with your research 
check this out. You know, uh, that's Dennis. Great answer. And Donna had just said she uses the app. So that it was a perfect answer to help her. So the art of closing. And, and by the way, this is an art. I mean, it's, there's no doubt about it. You've got to love to close. I mean, that's something that you want to get there, but you got to be patient because you got to deliver the information. But closing is an essential part of the selling process. And selling, ladies and gentlemen, is a great profession. It is not something that you, you can be very proud of being a professional when selling. And I say this, it's because you're educating, you're providing solutions for people. Everything that people are looking for and what we know that people don't like to be sold, but they love to buy, we have to expose that information. A successful close will provide that. And there's no one way to get it done. Uh, I just want that to be very clear with you. So in talking- We'll share about, a couple different ones tonight, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. And the easy one is, Jim, uh, is basically running into the direct approach, you know, and just asking the person to join in, letting them know they need to qualify you. The fear of loss are two different things that they're going to talk about. But these are the two things, the fear of loss or, you know, fear of loss of the close. Uh, you want to use that since that's one of the biggest reasons why people buy but you gotta let them know also that they're qualifying you know and all of this is important getting in the wholesaling process in place here you know and, and as we talked earlier today dennis and we we're talking about qualifying people you know I, I think back to i've had some really good friends who are professional recruiters uh for executives and for high income areas and they said the number one way that they recruit is by fear of loss meaning that they will tell somebody what that job entails and then say you know may not be for you can you send me a couple referrals and i'll talk to them and they say whenever they start talking about talking to other people that's when the executive starts saying well give me a little more information about this and then they move into that qualifying. It's really no different than, than what we do in a lot of ways. And I mentioned to you earlier, you know, a lot of times when I'm talking to someone, I will say to them, I tend to sponsor in twos and threes. Um, what I mean by that is I don't, I, I've always got a lot of people in the pipeline. And if, Den if Dennis is one of my people in the pipeline, but Andrew's coming in the business with me, um, I might go back to Dennis and I might say, hey, Dennis, it does, and this is the key words, it doesn't matter to me either way, but I want you to know, Andrew is going to be getting started next week. I think I've told you a little bit about him, or you may have met him. Um, if you're interested in getting started first, because I talked to you first, great. You qualified. I'd love to get you started. If you don't, that's great too. You'll be part of his organization when the timing is better for you. So what I'm really saying without saying it is, hey, there's a person, you're gonna have your first person if you're smart enough to get started. Fear of loss has brought in more people than anything else I've ever done in this business by just saying to them, you know, how it's gonna be, but letting them know it doesn't matter to me because it really doesn't in the long term. I'm just putting them in a better position. So th those are a couple areas that can help move someone off the fence. And by the way, I always hear people, I've got people on the fence. If you let them know someone else is coming in, they can get in front of them. They're not on the fence or their butt is stuck on the fence. It's not coming off. Um, they're just not ready to make a decision. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Bam, you know, that's all Bam. I can think of. <laughs> so. Let's just jump into it. The obvious one, as I was saying earlier, was directly ask for the sale or basically coming right into the business. But here's one for a product. Um, I'm sort of partial to weight loss. That's my major. But you're looking for a weight loss solution. I can provide a science-based and proven method to achieve this. The TLS 30-Day Jumpstart Kit is an all-inclusive lifestyle that you can lose up to whatever. Uh, I know with many of my clients, they're running between 12 and 15 pounds, but that's not for everyone. But I just want you to know uh, in the first 30 days, purchasing today for $199, you can save $50 off the traditional retail cost if you bought the products uh, included in the kit. 
shall I write up the purchase? That is pretty much a direct. Shall vote. I write up the purchase? Yep, I love it. <laughs> okay. Looks like here's another one. Looks like you decided to buy a car. This red one has everything you're looking for, and it's available to drive home today. Shall I write up the purchase? That's a little bigger ticket item. Yeah. <laughs> Closing by making a choice is another good way. Uh, here's an example. Uh, when you're going into the actual registration process or getting them close to the finish line, uh, their example of registering their unfranchised business, uh, the fast start kit, the cost is $449. Now, just so everybody knows, as of July 1st, there's going to be an increase in the subscription fee and the subscription plus as well as the fast start and the renewal by $20 here in the United States. Every country or market country will have that in increase in their currency. Uh, yeah, so I think we announced that at World Conference, right, Dennis? And that yes. coincides with our shop live, which you and I are very excited about coming to all of our unfranchised owners. Absolutely. And you get a variety of Market America exclusive brands, the 30-day box of daily essential packets, ideal for trial size marketing, your subscription, and what are we doing? We're selling the value, okay? Yeah. You're breaking it down and you're getting 300 business volume. So in addition to the qualifying business volume, which means what? To accrue volume, you're getting an extra 100 to start getting you on your way to meet your commission criteria. Now, or you can go based on the current use of the MA branded products, we can enter, okay? Now this is a person that's already using products. I'm going to take them in on a subscription plus kit for $169.99. That's basically a 30-day supply of daily essentials. It also includes a package of awake uh, energy shots. And that includes two months of the UFMS, and it's a $70 saving. So that's a great way if they're buying product with a subscription. So it's a subscription plus. And then with that, if they're selling daily essentials, so they buy five daily essential kits and basically they're getting their qualification because it's 40 BV per box. And basically it comes out, you know, to a nice round number. Now, would this qualify somebody? Yes, it would. And it would set them up to basically start selling immediately the product that they are loving. So it's less than $500 and you're on your way. And again, this is part of the whole impact selling process that you can look up and get an audio and listen to it of investigate, meet, probe, apply, convince, and tie up. Always, Always <laughs> one of my favorite trainings, Impact Selling with Dennis Franks. He's done a great job teaching that throughout the, the years. You know, um, on a quick re review, how do we know when we're ready? Have we identified the challenge or pain? Dennis talked about this earlier. Rate the level of pain that they're at and see where we're at in solving some of those issues. Are we providing that solution to their challenge or pain they may be looking for? Um, have you provided a solution that meets a strong value proposition, meaning being the cheapest doesn't mean the best value. And, and that goes with everything in life. I always, you know, when I buy a physical product, one of the things I always think about is how many uses will I get out of it? Because you can buy something very inexpensively you use once and it costs you $50. You can buy something that buy, it costs you $500, but if you use it a hundred times, it's a $5 per, verse, per use versus a $50 per use. The more expensive one, you actually got a better value on, and that's what this is. Have you made the solution known? I had a, a lady years ago who wanted to be able to put one of her sons through college. She wanted to have extra money. We, we broke down what would that need to be in the solution? How much volume would we need to generate in a business to create the kind of money she would need to, to supplement and support putting her son through, uh, through university? Does the prospect understand how the solution will pro provide the benefit because you understand it doesn't mean they do and you really have to keep asking those questions and, and making sure that they're feeling good about it uh, anything on here dennis you wanted to add on there no you know when i look at that it really comes down to understanding the whole play behind what we're doing here and you laid that out quite nicely oh yeah you know, don't worry about closing if you didn't go through the process, right? I think, I think my man called this vitamin E. 
engage, enlighten, educate, and empower. And, and you know, as we talk about closing, closing can only occur if you've done the evaluation. Have you done the process? Have you done the things that need to be set up ahead of time to be able to do that? And uh, I hope this, this segment helped you with your closing of customers, with your closing of unfranchised owners. Now we have nine days left. You might have some people on the fence. We may have given you some ideas. Also remember that subscription goes up $20 July 1st, which means maybe it's time to say, would you like to save that $20 and get started before July 1st? I, I'm always using whatever I can to see if they have, if they really do have that interest. Uh, Dennis, for homework this week, we're going to ask you to identify three people, customers or prospects that you should make a follow-up call to, okay? I personally would like to push you towards the prospects because I, I want us to get out of our comfort zone and get into the money zone, okay, where you know that you can, you can sort of push through some things. Call and ask them to take to a specific predetermined action. That might be to purchase a product. Maybe you met with them about products they never purchased. Maybe it's whether it's time to start the business. Hey, I don't know, you know, you've been looking at this for a while. We've determined you qualify. You've been trying products. Are you ready to get started? Just ask the question. Or maybe it's to buy a ticket. You know, I know you're not sure if you're ready to get started, but I have a local seminar coming up or we have our international convention coming up and I'd love you to have a ticket for that. Of course, we'd love for you to be there in person if that's possible uh, for everybody. And then report your results back to us as you do every week, which we love, love to get back from you. Uh, Dennis, next week is going to be fun. First 90 days for a new partner. It's going to be fun, especially because we'll have multiple things that will be very simple for you to follow. This is not a complex business, so do not make it that way. We sell products, we sell the plan, we sell tickets, and we build our shopping annuity. So I'm looking forward, Jim, to next week's masterclass. And like always, it's been a real pleasure working on follow-up and closing to very important parts of this business. Oh, always a pleasure. And, you know, we're really proud of uh, everyone who's on here and everyone who catches the recording who can't be on this evening. So thank you for taking the time. But more importantly, take action now that you've been with us. Have a great night. Have a great week. Uh, and we'll, we'll see you next Monday again. Dennis, thank you. Thanks, Jim. See you all.